Hello and welcome to this edition of Mutation University. In this video we're going to explore the perfect solids. There's five perfect solids. They're also called the Platonic solids. Plato was some Greek guy that was totally into solids so they named him after him. Uh, perfect solids is probably a better description. The goal here is we need a foundation for understanding how we can use this little toy have some brilliant genius insights into the universe at large. Uh, the basic idea is that a dodecahedron, and this is a dodecahedron, it is a language. Uh, a dodecahedron also is a computer. Now these are kind of uh, difficult concepts to grasp. Uh, obviously we're going to have to think a little bit differently to understand that. Um, basically, we need to think like an inventor would think. Uh, an inventor would think like a child. So we need to think like children. We need to think like computer programmers. Uh, we need to get the essence of these uh, basic ideas in order to understand those concepts and then apply them to bigger and more complicated things. But we're going to try and do it as simply as possible. And the simplest possible way to start is with the perfect solid. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Uh, the first thing we'll do is name them. Uh, they generally are named after the faces. This one has four faces, therefore it's called a tetrahedron. This one has six faces, therefore it's called a hexahedron, but we all know it as a cube. Hex means six, it has six faces. This is an octahedron, eight faces. Dodecahedron, twelve faces. And an icosahedron, twenty faces. So, if we start with the faces and name the five perfect solids, then we have a progression from 4 to 6 to 8 to 12 to 20. Pretty clear. <clears throat> but is it really? I mean, there's, there's better ways to do this. So let's, let's talk about that. Well, let's start with, uh, we'll start with a, uh, a, a procedural diagram. We'll say this is our procedure, this is our input, and this is our output. So, what we want to know is, what procedure does it take to input some information uh, and get a result? In this case, we're trying to make perfect solids. So, what, what kind of rules and laws and, and uh, languages do we need, and what are the inputs? Well, let's just take uh, the, the standard idea that a uh, perfect solid is defined by its face. So we'll, we'll do a face procedure and uh, see if we can't find the best possible and the simplest possible way to create a procedure where we can input simple information and generate the five perfect solids. So the first thing we need to know is what's a face? Well a face is a uh, polygon, it has to have a certain number of sides, it has to have at least two sides, uh, or I'm sorry it has to have at least three sides, only two sides, that's not really a shape. So the simplest possible face or shape would be three sides. Uh, of course then we could have four sides, we could have five sides, and uh, we could have six sides. Now I should say that uh, these are called perfect solids for a reason. Uh, there are three different elements to each of these solids. There's the face, which is the planar shape, in this case a square. There are the edges, which is the intersection of of two faces, and then there are the vertices, or vertex, uh, which is the intersection of more than two faces, so three or more faces. Uh, the word vertex is kind of crappy, so we're going to use the word point from now on. We're not going to call these vertices, uh, we'll call them points because it's just easier to say, especially in the plural. So the reason that all of these are perfect is, is because every single face is identical to every other face. Every single edge is identical, identical to every other edge, and every point is identical to every point. So uh, all of the uh, faces then are also perfect. We have a perfect um, equilateral triangle, we have a perfect square, we have a perfect pentagon, and we're going to think about a perfect hexagon, six-sided face. So the first question is, um, which of these faces and how many of them will create the uh, perfect solid? Well, we need to have at least three faces. Uh, we need to have at least three sides and three faces. So if we look at 
a three-sided object and three of them, that would be three triangles. Uh, the square, we have four sided uh, face with three of those. And then the uh, pentagon, there's three of those. And then if we look at the, the hexagon. Well, the first thing we notice is that in order to make a point, uh, you have to be able to lay them out in the plane, but then they have to be able to fold up. So, for instance, um, we can fold three pentagons to create a point on a dodecahedron, but when we get to the hexagon, they don't fold up. They actually make a plane because each of these angles is 120 degrees. We have three of them. That's um, 360 degrees. Therefore, you, you can't have a six-sided uh, perfect solid. Who knew? Who'd have thunk it? So we can get rid of those. So now we can see easily that uh, we can have a, a, a perfect solid that has three-sided uh, faces and three of them. That's a tetrahedron. Uh, we can have a perfect solid that has four-sided faces and uh, three of them. And that's a cube. And we can have five-sided faces and that's a dodecahedron. But can we have five-sided faces with four faces coming together? No, because they don't fit in there. Same thing with the, four, with the squares. They do fit, but it once again forms a 360-degree plane. You can't fold it up. You can fold up three, but you can't fold up four. Well, look at this. We could fold up uh, three, and then we could add another one and fold up four, and lo and behold, that is an octahedron. Uh, we can add another one to the octahedron to make five. And happily enough, that is an icosahedron. So now we've got that. Can we add another one to the icosahedron to make six? No. That's six. That's a plane. Can't do that. So five is the, the limit. So we have limits here. We can have a three-sided, four-sided, five-sided face. Can't have a two-sided. Can't have a six-sided. Okay, we can have three of these, three of these, we can have three, four, and five of these. Those are the only five possible ways of all the possible ways to make a perfect solid. That's it. So we used a, a pretty simple uh, a procedure for forming these and we've gotten a result that, that tells us these are the only five that are possible. So let's imagine that we had a, uh, a function or a machine and we uh, input the number uh, four for sided face, and it would output the result of a cube. Okay, but is this the best possible way to make these um, five objects? I mean, can we think of another procedure that would be simpler and would be better? Uh, and better in what sense? Well, better in a lot of different senses. So. What would be the set of rules, the idea, the, the machine, the black box that we could input something and get out something? Well, the first question uh, we should ask is, what are, what are these things? What, what's the same about them? Well, they all have uh, points, edges, faces. Um, all the faces are different. There's different numbers of faces. Uh, I'll just kind of... Uh, cut to the chase and say the edges aren't that interesting. So that leaves us with the points. Uh, how can we uh, see these things better as points? Well, the first thing to answer the question, what are they? They're all five spheres. So that's important. Um, a sphere is the most symmetrical object in the universe. And uh, that's where all of these get their symmetry uh, at, at the very bottom. So if we had a sphere, and we imagined a process where we, we, we had a machine that we could put points on the sphere and they would evenly distribute themselves. So let's say we had these four points and this was programmed to take a number of points and then spread out and equally space all of the points that we put on there. Uh, well, if we did it with 20 points, uh, it would look like this. This is, uh, this is not easy to do. I uh, challenge you to go to your dad's pool table and get his cue ball 
and see if you could take a marker and put 20 points on them equally spaced. If you did, uh, you would get a dodecahedron. So um, now we've got a new, a new process that we can consider. Instead of making perfect solids with the faces, let's see what happens if we make them with the points. Well, we already know what the five perfect solids are, and we already know what happens, um, uh, or we already know how many points they have. This one has four points, this one has eight points, this one has six points, so maybe we should change those around. This one has 20 points, and this one has 12 points. So maybe we should change those around. So now we have a new ordering here. So if we imagine that the input is 4, then the output is going to be a tetrahedron. If we could write this program or create this language or make a machine, and all we had to do was input the number of points. And so we would take a sphere, we would put it on the four points on it, and it would generate, lo and behold, a tetrahedron. Well, that's pretty cool. So then we could take, uh, we already know what the possible inputs are, we could say, well, let's put six in, and we would generate a octahedron. We could put the number eight in, and we would generate a cube. Okay, we could put the number 12 in, and we would generate a icosahedron. And we can put the number 20 in, and we generate the dodecahedron. So now we've got uh, we got something we can work with here. This could be this could be big. We could do stuff with this, um, and we will. We're going to do some cool stuff with this, and we'll do that on the next video.